This is Paul Tursley with a demo of Open Sesame version 1.5. In this video we're going to look at ways you can export parts of a project for external editing such as in a text editor or a spreadsheet. This feature has had a big revamp in version 1.5 making it easier than ever. You can export text, textiles, footage paths, property values, render queue items and many other things. You can also use these text files with a separate script called Open Sesame Server to create fully automated project versioning and rendering workflows. So to start, I'm going to show you how to export just the text layers in a project for spreadsheet editing. You could use this as an easy way to create multiple versions of a project, such as different languages. You could send the spreadsheet to a client for final text approval and then easily incorporate any changes. So for this demo, we're going to use a After Effects template from freeaetemplates.com called Photo Reflections. This is a kind of photo slideshow template. OK, so let's start by opening that project into After Effects. Now you'll see here that I've already added some photos of my own but the text is still just placeholder text at the moment. So we're going to run Open Sesame. So I've already installed it in the After Effects Scripts folder. I recommend installing it here rather than the Script UI Panels folder. So we'll run Open Sesame and then we'll click Export Editable Values and then this Show Edit List button. So the edit list is where you add the parts of your project that you want to be editable. In this case, we just want all the text layers, so I'll just click All Text. Now, before we export, let's have a look in the preferences here. We can see the uh, formats you can export editable as. So we have here tab-separated values, comma-separated values, or JavaScript object notation, or JSON format. Now the first two are what you would use if you were going to be editing this in a text editor or spreadsheet, while the JSON file uh, would be if you were going to read this into a web app and uh, create a web form or link it up to a database. But in this case we'll select tab separated values and click export project. And you'll see that along with a copy of the After Effects project, we have this text values file. If I open that into a text editor, you can see uh, these are the text layers. But for this demo, we're going to open this in Excel. So it's slightly easier to edit these in a spreadsheet because everything comes in as separate columns. So if we look through this, we can see on the first line there is a reference to the After Effects project that this is linked to. Then we have information that Open Sesame needs to locate the text layers in the project. Then we have some reference telling you the composition and the name of the layer. And finally we have the text values. And the text values are unique in Open Sesame in that every other setting is contained in a single cell with the heading name, then a colon, and then the setting. Whereas text values, the the actual text values are split into a second cell and this was done to make it easier to edit the text or copy and paste in blocks of text. So I've already created some more text here. So if you're going to send this to clients you might only send uh, a simple spreadsheet like this and then copy and paste the text back in later. So I'm going to select this Colorado text and paste and then simply close and save that text file and then we'll return to After Effects and select import project and select that text values file and Open Sesame will open the project that is referenced in the text file and then read through the text file and apply any changes so we can see here we now have that text in the project. So as you can see, very simple for exporting, editing, and then re-importing uh, ch those changes. So for the next part of the demo, we're going to go a bit deeper into other things that you can export and edit. 
So now let's say we came back to this later and ran Open Sesame again. Now a nice thing about the edit list is when things are added to the edit list, they get flagged in the comments. And if you return to the project later, you can click this load list button and it will scan through the project and repopulate it with any items that had previously been added to it. So now we're also so going to add the footage. So we'll click all footage and you'll see here that that's now added uh, the photos. And what else? So I've created this pre-comp, this blue control pre-comp, and this controls the blue theme in the project. And on this, I've applied a color balance effect and we want to make the hue editable so we can change the color scheme. So I will select this in the timeline, the hue property, and then I will click add selected items and you'll see here at the bottom of the list we now have this hue property so that that will now be exported to be editable as well and what else so at the bottom here we have some options for the different settings that can be exported for the various different item types and for text this time instead of just text only we're going to export text and styles and let's also sort this list by type now the order that things appear in the list is the order that they will appear in the text file. So that's all we need to do there. But one other thing is I'm going to add the final output comp to the render queue. So you don't need to select things, uh, render queue items uh, to add to the edit list, any queued render items will automatically be exported to the text file. So let's click export project, save that again. So now when we open this into Excel, we'll see it has a lot more information in it. We have, so for footage now, we have the um, footage paths and on text, as well as just the text, we now have font, font size and fill color. Then we have this hue property, which has a value of zero at the moment. And then uh, the render, we've got the start time and duration. We have the output module, uh, lossless, and then we have the render path. Uh, finally, this options line, now this is only used when this is being used with Open Sesame Server. So in this case, we can ignore it. So what changes do we make? So Let's change this to New York. So for the footage path, now for the footage on these, I have created different folders, but I've kept all the footage names the same. So all I need to do is replace the uh, this folder name in the path. So I'm just gonna select these cells and do a find and replace for Colorado replace with New York okay now for the um, hue property I'm, I'm going to change I'm going to change that value to 240 which I happen to know is going to make it go green and then for the render path well we could just change the render path but as we're in a spreadsheet we can kind of do cool spreadsheety things so in this case i'm going to add a function uh, concatenate now i need to put the text into quotes so i'm going to put this in an underscore here basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the first cell of the text which will always be the place name and use that to generate the render path so you can see there now we have the New York in the render path and another thing I'm going to do is add a second output module now each render line needs at least one subsequent output module line but if you want more you can just add more of them so I'm just going to duplicate that line now for this one for the output 
module template I'm going to use um, H264 now this needs to be a template that you've already set up in After Effects in the output module templates and finally I'm going to edit this line now we need to correct this so it's reading from the right cell Oops. Try that again okay and I'm also going to add H264 to the file name okay so that's all the changes so let's do file save as and make sure saving it as a tab delimited text and the the file name doesn't matter uh, as you saw the name of the project that it's linked to is contained uh, in here so but the actual file name of this text file is not important so if we return to After Effects and select Import Project and select that text file we can see it's green and um, we now have the new New York photos and the new New York text and also in the render queue we have two output modules uh, one with the h264 template okay so now we've got this all set up let's do it one more time so we have let's do uh, Japan as the next one so just paste that in and we'll do a search and replace on the file path and replace New York with Japan and you can see that's now updated in the render names automatically and so let's also change the um, font so we'll do a search and replace on the font and replace the current one with let's choose something kind of tacky marker felt Thin. Now you need to know the exact font name and uh, so what you could do is you could create some text layers with different fonts in After Effects and export them with Open Sesame and then read off the fonts that way. So let's replace that. Okay. So I think that's all the changes so let's do File Save As again and uh, call this Japan. Okay, so let's import that. Okay, so we have the Japan render items set up and Japanese photos and the text. Now, uh, one thing we can see here is one of these bits of text is too long. Um, this uh, text text on text comp 4 is too long to be fit in comfortably so this gives me a chance to show one other uh, feature which is uh, the ability to automatically resize text and so let's go back to the original template project so we're not working with the changed version and open the text 04 comp now we know that we want the text to be no wider than this and uh, so one thing that I can do is quite useful is if I add a null now a null is a hundred pixels wide and so if I look at the scale you can see scale hundred percent but if I then drag this I can read off a value in pixels that is the kind of maximum width in pixels that we want this to be so you can see here about 1700 so the way this works is you simply rename the layer to width space 1700 and there are two options width will only scale the width of the text and it will only scale it down it will only scale down text that is too big it won't scale up text and the other option is fit 
So again, fit will scale down to the width, but it will scale the height proportionately to match as well. But in this case, we're going to use width. Now, because I haven't made any um, changes to the project, I haven't moved any text layers, reordered any text layers, I can simply save back over the template. And then let's select Import Project and select that Japan text again. And there you see the text has been automatically scaled to fit inside the width. So this demo has only really touched on all the different things you can do. Um, the script comes with a very extensive PDF guide which explains all the various things you can do and there should also be a link to that on the Open Sesame page. Um, but that's the end of this demo, so thanks for watching.